The scripture reading from for this morning's lesson is going to be Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devise, devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict within the community. And we're going to start with a group participation here. So go follow along with me. I've got a quote, and I think you can finish the last of it. If you don't have something nice to say, then what? Or, if you don't have something nice to say, then talk about the uppums. So now that I've got your attention, let's go into gossip. We're going to have to go into the secular first because there are several different definitions that cause us problems, especially in the, the secular research. When we pose research to you, you're getting a partial to it, not the truth, and so I want to go to that first. So let's look at the Webster's Dictionary, and first very simply says, a casual or unconstrained conversation or reports about other people. Second part of that is a critical piece here, typically details that are not categorically proven. The hint is that in most cases, since it's not proven, it's probably not true. That's a definition that we, <coughs> excuse me, work on in the secular area. The biblical definition is very simple. It is slander. There is no possible uh, positive areas. It is slander. The difficulty run into is when you get research that comes out and says, such as this, in clinical research settings of psychology and neuroscience, it is simply defined as a conversation about people who are not present. That means there are several definitive parts of that, not only negative. But we play with this in the research, and we say that gossip has a prominent place. Now, if you look at slander, you would say, absolutely not. Something's wrong with the definition. So that's why I went again to the definition of research. You'll understand a little bit more when you get some person at the media giving you a, a quote from some of this research that we have done in neuroscience. It can range from four different areas. Number one, it can be a positive reference. So if I'm talking about you, you're not there, but I give you a compliment, that would be a positive one. So give an illustration. The greatest illustration we have here is, of course, that the only way we reference the elders for the decisions they make, even though they have a myriad of personality quirks we have to deal with along the way. The second would be a normal or neutral talk. That's called chit-chat. Now, the illustration we have here would be Jimmy Hopper. So it's not a negative, it's not a positive, it's just saying Jimmy Hopper is the greeter for Sun Valley Church of Christ. But if we're being totally honest, we would say Jimmy Hopper is a fantastic greeter for the Sun Valley Church of Christ. But our last one, we talk about the neutral, so sorry, Jimmy, you can't say that at this time. The third is a little bit different, it's critiquing. As a professor at Arizona State University, we would get edicts coming down from the top, and we have a term sustainability. And I'll be honest with you, most of those were sustaining ASU, not the mental health of the students. So our committees, my committee that I was chairing, had to look at it and say, what can we do to make sure that we lessen the impact upon the health of the individual, such as staff or faculty? That's critiquing. It's not negative about the people that did it because they're just making laws, but we're critiquing it while the positive or negative. It's very little you'll see in the research. The fourth of these is the one we spend the most time on, and that is the malevolent or malicious backbiting comments that are made. So when you see research and you see them saying that certain percentage of people gossip, <coughs> that is percentage of positive, neutral, and negative. Although, if you look at it, most of that is negative. We frequently come in contact, this research, with individuals that speak about people when we're not around. Most of that is negative. We are bombarded in the secular world by it. If you don't want to believe that, just go on the media and look at what's there. Tragic what we're seeing in the social media and what we're finding with the impact of self-esteem on individuals. So doing research with Cronkite, 
School of Broadcasting just before I retired, who found out that uh, Twitter was the worst of all, categorically the worst one of all. And it's interesting because Elon Musk just tried to buy that for $46 billion, small chump change. And now they're suing him for $44 billion because he challenged him and said, how much of the material that's going across your spectrum is negative? And they said 5%, and we all laughed. It's horrible, but they couldn't guarantee that. He pulled out, now they're suing him for $44 billion. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in court when they have to prove that they're only 5%. I'll go on further. So whenever we have a list of <clears throat> what are the characteristics <clears throat> or personality comp, uh, <clears throat> characteristics that show that people are more inclined to gossip, it's very natural for us to look at it and go, oh, how many of those are mine? In other words, how much that fits me? <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's look at the four. Extroverts with introverts. People like to talk and interact with people are more inclined to gossip than those that are not. The second, we have eight learning styles that we look at in research, <clears throat> three of those are mentioned here, but the verbal learner has a greater potential for gossip than not. They're an individual we call a verbal processor. They talk out loud when they have a problem, and you get to hear what their thinking is along that track. A third of these is those that higher education, and the fourth one is those that have higher socioeconomic status. I was really starting to worry here that the next one was gonna be, and he's bald. So what age groups? There's been a shift, a complete shift in research. And so let's look at the age group that we have now. This is the data from 2022. 81% of all the millennials that have been asked say that they are more inclined to gossip. 81%. This is self-reported data so the data could shift. <clears throat> to be honest with you, that's pretty consistent. The second highest group are Gen Xers, that's 70%. Now we wonder, why are those two <coughs> strongest with the influence of gossip, social media? That is, all the data shows social media and the impact on those individuals. The next group are, guess what? Baby boomers. They are not influenced by social media. So we are doing it because we want to. That's the sad part. Get into the research, then we'll get into the Bible because that's where we should reside. Here's the research that we're doing now, mostly in this field. It's looking in the <coughs> corporate area because the amount of money that's being lost in the corporate area is phenomenal per year. I'll get in that just a second. This was the, one of the studies that showed 66% of all the employees talked about their employees in their conversations. So more than half of all the conversations, all the conversations in the corporate sector were focused on other people. Again, positive, neutral, but most of that is negative. About three years later, 2012, 90% of the workforce gossip was about other people. Most of that's negative. This study was completed just before the pandemic. It was released basically an hour and 12 minutes per day <clears throat> was dedicated to speaking about other people in the workforce. That's an average. Now let's break it down. Is there more negative? Absolutely. Look at the loss. Because guess what? Once you have an uh, discussion like that, you don't just prank your mind off and start thinking about something positive. It takes you a long time to get from that juncture to where you've resolved it or moved it out of your thinking. This one was just released this year. Again, looking at the corporate arena. Again, this is where most of the research is at. Look what it says, militia gossip reduced the organization's productivity. Why does it take everybody away? Instead of being at work doing what they're supposed to be, they're doing something else because somebody else is bending their ear. It takes away from the focus of the organization, <coughs> excuse me, and as it says here, the revenue losses. They're estimated in the billions of dollars. And by the way, that's not small, lower end. That's multi, multi billions of dollars lost for the productivity every year in a corporate United States. We'll talk about the international in just a second. But the terrible part about this is the, the mental anguish that is generated from when people say something negative about somebody at the workforce. There's no way you can resolve it. In fact, the more we talk about it, the more we look guilty. And it's just tragic. So we say, if I don't gossip, it's not going to impact me. Data does not show that. 
Here's the research. When we do gossip, we're naturally marginalized by the social group around us. I'm going to define marshal, uh, mar um, marginalized in just a second. For those of us like me that do not like to gossip, I'm marginalized as well. I am impacted whether I do or I don't. But I choose not to, and that's what we should do as well. So let's look at marginalized. Marginalized means that people around you see you as insignificant or peripheral. It means if you're not going to talk about people, I'm not going to talk to you. Or if you choose not to talk about it, we're going to talk about you anyway. So the terrible part about this is that we're all impacted, and we're all impacted negatively by it. So some of the statistics really fast. There are three individuals at the end of the turn of the century that said, we're going to stop this. Let's look at ways we could do that. And they marshaled laws and put the, the laws in, didn't look at the end product or what caused it, and they had an uptick in bad behavior. Because people that were not necessarily against or for uh, gossip, that they're, they're taking something away, so they rebelled against them. So they had an uptick. So what they need to do is look at what causes it. And that's what I'm going to focus on this morning before we get into the, uh, the gospel. So let's look at two big studies. This one had 12,000 data bits. That means there was 12,000 different organizations captured here. Who gossip and what is the impact? Very large study in America. 75% of all white collar employees gossip. More negative than positive. So the question I'm sure you're burning to ask that I will answer, do women or men gossip more? I know you have the answer already, so the answer is yes. <laughs> I'll have to define that, and I'm going to get that point in just a second. Here's an interesting study that was just recently released. Oh, excuse me. Remember that we have those three factors in there. So we can see from the bevy of research that states that women gossip more than men. That research has been done for about 100 years. I looked at three major studies that were just released in uh, Europe. All of them said women gossip more than men. But how much is negative? How much is positive? That's what you should be asking. Here's a recent study. When they put a microphone in front of the women, 19% of them said that they gossip about people at work. Look at the figure for the male gender. 55% said they gossip. Now you could come back and say, wait a second, that's self-reported data. So you have a hedge there. Interestingly, when we look at that data across our spectrum in the last 50 years, when we ask a female about her situation, she is pretty honest. When you ask a male, he has to filter it through, what am I going to look like when the answer gets out? So we say 19% is pretty accurate. For 55% for the male, that should go up. One poll is an international marketing agency. They were looking at this factor about men. Look at the tragic end of this. Men were not only gossiping more, they're twice as likely as giving bad information about people than women were. They're twice as frequently saying something negative about people than the women were. The most tragic statistic from this was they were the happiest when they were involved with shedding negative comments about other people. That's the happiest part of their day. We can get into the more statistics, and I'm going to try to get through this, but the bottom line is we have now had a shift. When we were growing up, those are the white hairs, we had TV shows and movies that had the old lady running from one house to the other telling the gossip or on one phone call to the other. That's no longer the gender. It is younger, and it is male-driven. Everything has changed. This I found fascinating. I don't know how they got this through IRB. Internal Review Board looks at the impact of a study on people that were in there. The University of California, Riverside, bugged all of the common places where the students talk to students, faculty talk to faculty, administration talk to administration. They bugged them all. And they recorded all of them and then split them out. And they came up with this. Categorically, women gossip more than men. But when you split it out from the negative side, there was absolutely no difference between male and female. 
Henceforth, you know, I don't know why I said yes to the answer. It's interesting looking at the Bible, and we'll have uh, one other little piece and then get into um, the Bible a bit more. Uh, Solomon, obviously, the wisest man of all, had this. Look at the first three words of this. Death and life. We have two choices. One, if we open our mouth, which John was referencing here earlier this morning in the class, we have a reference <clears throat> to what I say about an individual we choose. Life, uh, death and life are the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. F I. The negative, that's death, because I move away from God, and I'll eat that fruit, because I picked that fruit. I chose that fruit. One last little bit of research that I have here. Uh, this uh, gentleman is a well-known uh, psychologist and scientific researcher in neuroscience at Duke University. And a quote I want to read from it very specifically. I can learn things about our attitudes, your attitudes, your beliefs, and ways of dealing with people by seeing who and what you gossip about. Even if I don't join in, just hearing people gossip tells me things about what you're thinking about is important. Another, uh, excuse me, whether you can be trusted to keep secrets and so on. You know, the reality is you don't have to have a PhD in neuroscience to figure this out. We do that all the time. Have you ever been around somebody that gossiped? Do you want to give good information to that individual about you? No, categorically. So we do that. You don't have to have a PhD in neuroscience to get that done. So the question you should ask me is, why are the three reasons why we gossip? And this is accumulation of a lot of data that have been generated for the last five decades. The first one, above anything else, is low self-esteem. We fight for independence from the moment we are born. And as we get older, like you see the gray hair in my head, we fight to stay, keep that independence. It's extremely important for us. The reality is, when we gossip, we lose that independence. Because in essence, what we're saying is, I'm socially immature or I'm emotionally immature. That's what low self-esteem is. It does, we can see that when we, when we look at the brain and we see what's going on with the brain, we have some opiates in there and caflins and endorphins that come through when we're excited or happy and we do see that. But look at the word here, it's temporarily. Like a drug fix, once that wears off, I have to find another one because I cannot match that within that social immaturity that I have. The second down the list, but still is within the top three, is out of boredom. We know when that brain gets lost a little bit, we don't have a focus. It's very natural for us to look for something, usually something that's instantaneous gratification. And that's when Satan is there waiting for us because he knows that he can get to us at that point. The third, you might say, wait a second, that sounds more like self-esteem. And it is, but we're gonna split it out a little bit. Because as Ryan read, and thank you very much, Ryan, for reading that, he used the term haughty eyes. Guess what that is? That's pride. So pride plays in a major part here in why we do that. Why? Because we look at other people, and we get jealous of them because they're looking better than they are, than we are. They're doing things we're not doing. We feel bad about ourselves. So it's very natural for us to lash out at them, making us feel better because we're making them feel worse. We only do that in our mind because it's not categorically what is happening in real life. So two of the major reasons why we gossip is because low self-esteem, pride. So let's get into the verses that we had and Ryan read for you just a few moments ago. When Solomon says, when God hates something, that should be a sounding gong to say, let's get away from that as fast as possible. He ratchets it up, because in the first thing, he says there are six things that God hates, the Lord hates. Seven that are abomination to him. When Glenn was teaching class last quarter, and we talked about one of the churches in Asia, in Asia, and it became an abomination for God, that should be the song saying, wow, let's get away from this. That is something I don't want to be a part of. So let's say we do not categorically want to be caught in these seven things, because God has an abomination for all of them. Take the first verse, haughty eyes. We just said that envy has caused pride. So pride is going to be associated here. Now you're going to see different colors because there are some people that could argue back and forth that maybe haughty eyes not necessarily as directly at this. So we call that a marginal one. For those in red, categorically, that fits gossip. 
So haughty eyes, marginal, one. Flying tongue, definite. Binds of uh, something that sheds blood, unless that's directly linked to it, I don't see it. So we have one, one, and one at this point. Next verse. A heart that desires, desires or devises wicked plans. That's definitely gossip. Going from one to another. Shedding things that are not proven to be true. And the other one, feet that ran rapidly to evil. You can say, because what we showed you with the addiction, mental addiction, it happens with gossip, that yes, going from one temporary situation to another is there. I'll call that marginal <coughs> as well. We can argue that in there. So you can see of the four things, the five things we've had, two are direct, two are indirect. Let's get the other three. Those other two. False witnesses who declares lies categorically. Fits gossip. No way to cut that any differently. And one who spreads strife among brothers categorically here. So we can say that five of the eight things directly related to gossip. Abomination for God. I think it's pretty categorical that this is not something we want to get involved with. So how is it impacting the church? And it is. It's important for us to look at the secular side first to understand what is happening, get an understanding of what may invade the church. So it's always interesting to go to find out what's happening in the, the citizens around us to understand we want to try to avoid that here. The first is mistrust. When you have an individual that you know is shedding or sharing information that's confidential to you about someone, it automatically brings up a red flag for us saying, I will not give that person any information about me or somebody I know. In a communion of church, a family, commu communication is extremely important. Without that link, we start losing some of the, the, the glory that we have as brothers and sisters to help one another. John's going to get to this a little bit later, so I'll steal his thunder. In James 5.16, it reads, therefore, confess your sins to one another. How many of you would like to confess your sins to somebody that gossips? Anybody want to get in that line? Absolutely not. What's lost? So let's look at what's lost. Because we pray for one another. Why? What's it say in there? For healed. This is an extremely important part of what we have as brothers and sisters in Christ of being that brother and sister that comes when you're down and you find the healing that's there. Gossip takes that away. A prayer of a righteous man, when it's brought about, can accomplish much. I have been in those situations where I needed prayers, and some of you have prayed for me, and that, I'll be honest with you, it was fantastic. We need more of that, not the other. Proverbs 20:19. One who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets. Ah, look at the definition. Therefore, do not associate with a what? Gossip. So you see, gossip and slanderer are linked directly in the Bible. That was the definition I used before. The spreading of lies. Information that's not confirmed, be careful. We have a children's game called Telephone. I'm sure many of you have played the game where somebody starts with a statement and they give it to you so you're not, other people can't hear, then you are to, be, be lay, or, or to relay that information to the next person in line. <clears throat> in, interestingly, at the end, the message is changed dramatically. Not because you try to do it. Communication is very interesting. We encode the data to other people that we've decoded. Because my personality learning style is different than yours, I'm going to insert or take away some things that I don't believe defines what you just told me. And I'll give that to you in an encoded message. Problem with it is, you get my encoded message and your personality style changes it again. And so now that's what we get. So communication is very difficult anyway, even without trying to lie. Very difficult keeping that communication going. So I'm going to give you an illustration here. <clears throat> so basically, the fabric of that communication is, is compromised, just a simple fact of our encoding and decoding of messages in normal communication. So let's take an illustration here. So at the communion table, when we finished that, we had a prayer for the offering. 
And it's very natural for us to have this phrase attached to it out of 1 Corinthians, lay by in store. I'm sure you've heard that many times, and people will reference that instead of reading the whole script. Well, for the re reference, my mom and my sister are the quintessential shoppers until you drop dead. When they hear this, they pick it out as lay away and buy in the store. So you can see a totally different structure, not necessarily accurate, maybe. Exodus, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. What are the first three words? Exactly the same words as you shall not steal, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery. So a couple weeks ago when I made a reference in my sermon about gossip being the same as the other sins, we can see that here. Have you ever been the focus of that malicious gossip? It takes a long time to go through. Let's look at the psychological aspects associated with it. This is a publication that's dedicated to mental health, mental health of the family. And so they have put this article out just recently, I have here, and the impact on gossip to that person automatically lowers self-esteem. That's why we see the social media such a drag, because there's too much of that going on without being filtered. What happens to those people when they are impacted by that? They focus on their insecurities rather than their securities. The positives are now shredded internally. They deal too much with the negative. You can see the intensities and frequency of depression increases dramatically. And the saddest part of that is that even if they've never been suicidal before, they have thoughts of suicide, all generated from a thought given recklessly by someone on the outside. Tragic part of this. Proverbs 22, 1, a good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is better than silver or gold. Confidences are hard to build. It's hard to build trust. Easy to destroy that. Our job is building trust. How can you convert a person if the trust is not there? How can you build a, a trust if the relationship is not there? So again, that communion is confidentiality and how we talk to one another is extremely important. So who is the culprit here? Who is the one that drives us toward either death or life? Obviously, we cannot say categorically it's Jesus or God. It's got to be the other. So therefore, it's Satan. So once we get in that position, we know who's directing us to the end report or that end of that statement. So basically, when I, when I'm ready to start talking negative about somebody, I'm basically saying that my opinion or my point to you is more important than honoring you. That is exactly what I'm saying at that point. My choice. It should be, I should honor you first, because we just saw that in the scriptures. Proverbs 16, 28. A perverse person spreads strife. And a what? Slander. Gossip. Separates close friends. We saw that in just a little bit with the article I just referenced. And obviously it ruins relationships. I've had people that have said things about me that I've tried very hard to forgive, and I'll be honest with you, it still lingers. What's that relationship like? You can fill that one in. It's not a relationship. And especially if you've been burned several times in the process. When we look at the psychological aspects of relationships and those that have been compromised, categorically, most of those are never fully repaired. They can be peripherally repaired, but not fully repaired. So the question I want to raise to you is, how do you feel when somebody's talked bad about you? I know emotionally where I stand at this point. I can tell you categorically, I'm sure you can as well. The reality is, and the research is, that some of us are stronger, that we can survive that, but many of the people that we interact with are not. They're the ones at the bottom of the rung where we'll start looking at suicide or the severe depression. We Ill, can ill afford to be a participant in this. Who we've dealt with this morning, the Old Testament. Let's bring it to the New Testament. I stop here and say we are New Testament Christians. 
is it the same same focus we have on today? And I would say yes. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth. I cannot find any way in either my research background or my secular background a way to put gossip in as a wholesome word. I can't. If you want to argue that, I'll be more than happy to talk to you afterwards, but I cannot see that. But that means there's a change in focus here. But if there is any good word for edification among, according to the need of the moment, say that. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. That's where it's at. Choices, death or life, we have that. So that, will give, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Edify, courage, not discourage. The difficulty is we're all impacted by gossip. No matter what you try to do or what you do. It was fascinating being at ASU and I was up on the fourth floor. I was around the corner next to where my labs were located. And I would hear the gossip going down the hallway. They had to make a left-hand turn to come to my hallway to go out. I knew who was, going, who was saying it, and I knew where they were going, and they would walk past me. Every once in a while, they'd stop in, and they'd stop <laughs> talking because they knew I wasn't that interested. But they still came around my corner. The reality is we're all impacted. We've got to band together as a group to not let it hear because it has devastating impact upon the church. We offer invitations. And the invitation today, I want to focus a little bit differently. Yes, if you have uh, been on gossip in the past or have issues there, we're more than happy to talk to you because that, that's an impact upon your life and just the uh, spiritual life. But for those of you that have been the end point of the gossip, man, I'm reaching out to you because I know how bad that is, how troubling that is. And I'll be honest with you, this church is a praying church. If you have that and it's eating away at you because someone's gossip about you, we'll talk, we'll pray. We will do that for you. Whatever your needs are now, please come forward as we stand and sing.